Salah, prayer is such a burden, right? It's a hassle. It just keeps coming again and again and again. In fact, in the average lifespan of a human being, someone has to pray over a hundred thousand times. It's a chore, right? Wrong. Keep watching to find out how you can see Salah not as a burden, but as a privilege, as a gift, as a blessing. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. My name is Iqbal Naseem and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is a new YouTube channel and not many subscribers, but inshallah, God willing, it's going to grow and grow with your help. So uh, if you like the content that you uh, experience today, please hit the subscribe button uh, and share this channel with others too. Right, let's get back to the subject. Salah, prayer, something which is famous around the world and known for this as being an act of worship that happens five times in the day and night regularly. And for us as believers, when we think about the prayer, we think about Salah, oftentimes, even though we may not ever say it, within ourselves, the question may occur to us, why does this have to keep happening so consistently, so regularly? Couldn't it have just been once a day or once or twice a day, or maybe on certain days of the week only? Why does it have to keep happening throughout, throughout? And from the time that the sun sets, to the time that the sun is at its highest point and then it, and then when it's in the middle of the sky then when it sets again and then later on at night five times day in day out day in day out day in day out it disrupts our schedule it disrupts our sleep it, it feels like it gets in the way of what it is that we often need to be doing as human beings to function in this busy busy world now this perspective is understandable we can empathize with it we can appreciate why someone might have this perspective and no doubt i have felt like that before i'm sure you felt like that before either for a short period of time or maybe for a long period of time and people who do feel like that uh, and they don't tackle their mindset issue eventually unfortunately either best case scenario they'll keep praying but it'll be quite a mindless sort of prayer or a prayer in which they're not fully investing themselves and bringing their full heart and soul, let's say, into the prayer. Worst case scenario, they're just going to abandon it altogether because they don't see the point. And this is really the first thing we need to understand when it comes to how we can start to see Salah not as a burden, but as a privilege, not as a chore, but as a gift. And as with anything, we need to appreciate it in its wider context. Now, Salah will be a burden or will appear so for somebody who doesn't fully accept their reality as a human being. And that really is the first step. That's why before the Salah, there is, if you like, the Shahada, the bearing witness, the acceptance that there is no God but God. And within that, the fact that we are accountable, we are responsible, we are created by him, and we will be returning to him, that the life of this world is very short. And the only function that we have in this world is to serve and to worship him and to, if you like, maintain the purity of our souls. So, so that when we pass, you know, the, uh, the spirit, if you like, that emerges from us, it's the state of that spirit that actually matters. It's like this delicate vase, right, that we constantly at all times have to be uh, in charge of and taking care of and being very careful with, regardless of whatever, whatever else that we, we are doing. Now, if we appreciate this reality as human beings, we appreciate that we will be judged and that in this life we will be tested and we will be held accountable. That's a path, that's a journey that is a, a difficult one, a tough one, it has big consequences. Now, if we first appreciate and understand that overall reality and we then put Salah in that context, the way that you can improve, if you like, the way you appreciate your Salah is to uh, understand that Salah helps you make that journey more successfully. It enables you and strengthens you to maintain your focus uh, throughout your life. So if you treat the objective as a given, which is to remain in constant worship and service of the Lord of the heavens and the earth throughout your existence, then Salah is an enabler. And as with anything else, and especially nowadays, when people are, have set their mind on a particular objective, then people are looking all over the place for ways in which that can be enabled. 
So, for example, you know, productivity uh, gurus and self-help books and apps are flourishing left, right and centre nowadays. Why is that the case? Because people who have set their minds on achieving certain objectives want to know and people are happy to supply them with the information and the services to help them get to that objective more efficiently. Right. How can we be more productive, more effective, more efficient? People want to know. And that's why uh, in, there's an explosion in material surrounding this particular subject. And oftentimes that's typically to do with people's worldly goals. Right. How can I become richer, more successful? You know, how can I elevate you know, in terms of my career, what have you? And there's loads of support and advice and productivity tips around all of these things. If we appreciate that the central objective is to get to paradise, is to meet our Lord, is to earn his pleasure, then we'll think to ourselves, in fact, we will more naturally think to ourselves, well, what is going to assist me with this major objective of my life? And then, well, God has already done, done that for us, if you like. He's already told us, actually, the number one thing you need to do is As per the Quranic verse in which Allah addresses uh, Musa alayhi salam, Moses, and says, La ilaha illa innani anallahu, la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqimis salat li dhikri. I am God, there is no God but me, so serve me, worship me, and keep up the prayer, establish prayer for the purposes of my remembrance. And so as people who have already decided, who have already realized that in order to succeed, we need to remain mindful of God. We understand that prayer as a mechanism that enables us to remain mindful of God is a blessing. It's a great help because if it wasn't for this prayer, this is what we can think to ourselves. If it wasn't for this prayer, maybe I would have kept living the next part of my life in a higher state of heedlessness, in a higher state of forgetfulness. And it's not necessarily that we would therefore have, you know, committed grave sins or something, right, or fallen into serious error. But for the one who truly understands their objective and the one who truly has developed a love and appreciation for their Lord, they understand that even a moment's forgetfulness or heedlessness is something to regret almost. Yeah, it's something to be uh, improved upon. And so the idea that the prayer comes with this frequency enables us to stay on course, to stay on track. And what it also alerts us to is the idea that actually, or, or the realization that this is a, a difficult journey, a treacherous path, right? It's a difficult journey and a treacherous path. And it's very easy to, to slide off. You know, if you think about in an, an analogy in your mind, when you think about the straight path, sometimes we just you know, think of a picture of just a flat, wide road, Right. And we just sort of and it's you know, nice and straight. And then we just that's it. Now, that's an e that's an easy road to walk on. The straight path doesn't necessarily mean like lit it doesn't mean linear or literally straight. What it's referring to is the most efficient or direct way to get to God. But the straight path for a person in reality in this life, what it looks like or feels like might be quite winding. We have to duck and dive and move this way and that way and avoid this obstacle. You know, we have to weave, if you like. And sometimes what exactly that straight path is going to entail from us, you know, later on today, tomorrow, next week, next year, we don't know. We don't know right now. But what we do know is that we've always got this guiding compass. Every so often along the journey, even though it may look foggy in front of us, we have this opportunity to stop, reflect, reorient ourselves, connect with the, connect with the end goal, which is Allah himself, speak to him, ask for guidance, receive that guidance, receive inspiration, receive um, clarity if we feel confused, receive a sense of calm if we feel stressed, right? Uh, feel a, and the ability to express our gratitude when we are feeling thankful. All of these are gifts. They are blessings. They are gifts. They are, uh, as we said, enablers to help us, right? Enablers to help us. So we should feel, if you like, as grateful for prayer as a Formula One driver <laughs> appreciates the pit stop. Yeah, the Formula One driver has driving is going off on his course, but they appreciate the pit stop. They need to come in. They themselves can mentally reset their car and their engine, whatever else is, needs to be done gets gets fixed up, improved, and then they move on. Yeah, they reorient themselves. And just like a pit stop, the prayer doesn't need to be 
any longer or any shorter than it needs to be. It just needs to be done properly, decently, appropriately to the occasion. And then we move on to the next stage of life. I think this is a critical uh, perspective or a way to appreciate how prayer for us is, is a gift as a purifier, as a reminder, but in a way that really relates to how we understand life as a whole, right? And so let me summarize how it is that we will see prayer as a gift. Number one, get accustomed or fully, um, uh, fully aligned to what your life is really about, which is, which is simply uh, leaving this world in a state that is pleasing uh, to your Lord. Understand that there are many risks along the way, many enemies that you face along the way, many distractions and temptations that you face along the way. And the one main thing that's going to help you, save you, keep you oriented, keep you guided, keep you focused, is the Salah, is the Salah. And for that, for the person who really knows what journey they're on, they realize, wow, this is really precious. This is an amazing gift. This is something which was entrusted and given, uh, as far as we believe, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah grant him blessings and peace, when he was on his ascension in the heavens, right? Whereas every other commandment, if you like, you know, came when he is on earth. But this is something he went to the closest point that a person has gone to their Lord to receive this gift of prayer. Interestingly, of course, uh, according to the famous narrations, to receive it uh, as 50 times in the day and night. And that's something I always think about when, if I fail momentarily to appreciate the prayer as a gift, is to understand that actually, in principle, the idea that we should stand in front of our Lord and help ourselves to remain focused and mindful of Him 50 times in the day and night, like just that idea of being doing that emphasizes how important remaining consistent and focused and on course is and how the Salah helps with that. And so the five times okay, that we can manifest and demonstrate okay, will, inshallah, really assist us, really help us uh, in this journey. So that's the key. And if you ever feel that friction in your heart about the prayer, just appreciate this much. And hopefully your attitude towards the prayer will become more healthy, uh, more positive, and you will look forward uh, to the prayer rather than feeling that actually you don't really want to be there. May Allah assist us all and help us achieve consistency, focus and tranquility uh, in our prayers. Until next time, take care. How did you find that? I hope it was useful. If so, hit the like button, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.